We are going to start with the Akash Lab project. The first group is EDX Analytics. The mentors are Mr. Praveen Pal, Ms. Mitali Nayak, and Mr. Pushpak Burange. The main purpose of, of this project is to analyze the EDX student data to gain meaningful insights. Data analytics also involves a thorough study of database containing all demographic and activity information of a user. For this data, one can infer as to which category of students are most likely in interested in learning the course, the dropout rate, etc. The team is here to present. Good afternoon, everyone present over here. We, Index Analytics of Akash Lab, are here to give a presentation of what we have done for this whole month of two months. I am very thankful to Parak sir, Pushpak sir, Mitali ma'am and Praveen sir for guiding us throughout. And let me introduce my team members. I am Pallavi, she is Akansha, Ronak, Shubham, Sachin and Oshi. Now let's start with production. Now what is edX? As Ayushi had already introduced in the morning, it is a MOOC platform that is a ma massive open online course site where uh, students from all over the world can register free courses and learn many new things. And now coming to the second part that is data analytics. It is a discovery of meaningful pat patterns in data and the main aim of a project is to find out such uh, features or uh, relevant information through which we can fi figure out that a student is gaming the system or not. And as I have come up with the uh, word gaming the system, let me uh, tell what gaming the system means. Gaming the system is on behalf of a student when he is uh, attending uh, an ITS, that is an intelligent tutoring system like the edX course site, he uses certain features present in the edX itself and takes the advantages of those rules and uh, somehow finally reaches the final answer. For example, let me say, suppose hint abuse button. If someone has visited the Khan Academy website, there is a question and a hint, up, hint option. If the student is not an, interested in giving the answer, then he will click on that hint option and directly come to the answer and he will give that answer. And and his, it is recorded that yes, the student has completed, so he'll get the certificate in the end. So what we want to do is that we want to filter these students out so that in future we can uh, introduce some interventions for uh, slowing their gaming process so that they, these kind of students also learn equally good as the regular students. Parallelly, we have also worked on data visualization in which we are plotting uh, statistics like demographic data, gender, based on education level, etc. in high charts, pie charts, line graphs, etc. through which it can be a good feedback to all the people uh, who are designed and also the tutors to see like how popular their course is or how well their course is running so that they can get a feedback and based on that if they want some improvements they can do that further. So uh, this is the flow diagram of the log parsing. So first on the edX course site whenever a student clicks on a button or does any activity like logged in or whatever he does an event is generated which has been recorded in the tracking.log file and on the edX server. And our job is mainly to parse this tracking.log file, extract those events and we have classified them into certain tables which we are storing it in our own database. And then we are writing some queries for extracting features to de depict that this student is gaming, looking at such instances and we are storing, storing it in a CSV file. And as we are using uh, Veka which is a machine learning tool which is going to classify whether a student is gaming or not. We have to convert it into a .arff file, which is an input for Veka, and this will train the data set and give us the output whether that student is gaming or not. Now I would like to call Sachin to continue with log parsing. Thank you, Pallavi. Now I would like to continue how to parse log files. Log. Basically, log files are the files in which we record the series of events which are occurred in the system or in the software. When an event is generated, server creates an log entry and that log entries are added into the log files. When that log file reaches to the certain maximum limit of the size, then th those log files are archived and the archived file is stored and new log file is created. EDX ITS also uses log files for recording history and uh, keeping the track, track of the what, uh, whatever the activities student has done. For example, if student clicks on play video button, log entry with the event type play video is uh, generated and that is stored into the tracking.log file in JSON format. This is the uh, simple schema to store log data from tracking.log file into the Hive database. The first one is log database, a log table that will store the general attributes which are present in each and every log entry. For example, IP address of the host, page, 
those attributes are present in each and every uh, log entry those will be stored in that log table and for particular event type such as load video there are some special attributes which are associated with it for example uh, in speed change there are attributes like old speed and new speed those attributes will be stored in those particular table we need to keep our database synchronized with tracking.log file so for that purpose we are using status table status table contains different entries like lines read and size lines read represent the number of lines which we have already passed from the current tracking.log file and size represents the size of the file which we have passed when our program runs there are three possible cases first case is when current size is greater than old size this means that in the tracking.log file new log entries are added so our program will read the number of lines which have already been passed from status table and in the current tracking.log file it will skip those entries and pass only the newly added entries when current size is is equal to the old size that means the file is not modified so program will do nothing and when the current size is less than old size that uh, that means the file has been archived so ocean will continue thank you sachin so so as we know that we are working on large amount of data so to handle such a large amount of data we'll be using uh, big data tools so i'll give you a brief introduction of all the tools which we are using the first one is hadoop Hadoop is a framework or a platform which is used to store large amount of data in a distributed computing computing system computing environment in a project we have developed uh, we have set up a cluster of 5 6 nodes and um, stored the data generated in it the second one is hive hive is a data warehousing infrastructure which is uh, developed on top of hadoop uh, it works um, sim, uh, in a similar manner as that of sql queries and the last one is uh, scoop scoop is basically used to transfer data from normal database to hive and next part will be explained by kanshan thank you ashin uh, now i will be continuing with the connection of hive with java so uh, since we are using java program in order to write our hive queries the first task of us is to connect our java program through the hive server for that thing hive provides a a specific ser service which is called the hive server we need to run hive server on a particular port and need to mention that port number in our java program so that our jdbc driver is able to connect to the hive server and it is able to run our hive queries over that that server and return the output query to our java program so this is the sequence that from our java program jdbc driver what is stored in hadoop what data is stored in hadoop Yes, sir. We are you, different types of queries with different types of data. Yes, sir. Those tables are sitting in Hadoop. Ah, those tables are sitting. Okay. In uh, so, we have actually extracted all the useful information in our log table and all other table which was explained previously by Sachin. So now our next work is to extract some really very useful information from that, so that it is of some use to uh, either the course creator or to the student or in our machine learning feature so we will be using this so we have basically derived four types of features first feature is how much active a user is on a per day no, no, per day basis before that i always insist on requirements yes sir okay you started with the project objective i want to catch what do you call like gaming so gaming gaming, gaming. okay so before you proceed further yes sir okay so two things i understood your objective is to catch gaming yes, second thing i understood is you are going to catch gaming based on eight events yes sir yes sir you got exactly eight events yes sir okay hmm. where is the requirement document which says gaming is equal to where is that so we are using machine learning to classify whether a student is gaming or not any you can use anything yes sir we okay can now that machine learning tool will have an interface yes. to define gaming so what is the, what is gaming according to you that should come here so what is gaming based on the eight events so we have derived all the features based on that feature we have mapped it into the machine all right features feature. let's see what you, what you mean by feature so first feature is how much active a user is so 
so it is basically based upon two types of activities first is the videos played by a particular user on each day of the course and second is the number of questions attempted by that user user on each day uh, joining both these tables we can get an approx overview of how much active a user is on each day of the course so a combination of these two will give how much active a user is uh, second coming to the difficulty level of a question uh, since we cannot judge a student only on the basis of how many questions he has solved and on and he has taken how many attempts in solving that question we need a difficulty level to associate with each and every question so for that we have actually um, associated a difficulty level for each and every question and uh, this is based on the mapping like of for this formula we are actually recording that uh, for a particular question how many users have answered that question and he has answered that question in how many number of attempts so it will be uh, we we can actually I always get very confused when you somebody gives mathematics I'm very actually weak. okay now i don't understand first where are you getting the difficulty level of a question none of the events added no sir none of the events so, so we is generated data no sir we are having a track of that how many student have solved this question from log table we are getting that yeah this user has solved this question and in these number of attempts we okay, are getting no, no, from fine, the log fine. files i understand the yes, same sir. difficulty everybody has anyway i am not sure about your formula okay i don't know why you are generating it so let us go next all right don't give me mathematical formulas without justification they are all junk according to me if they are not tested okay next this is the fourth one where we are calculating the seek time of the video first time suppose the duration of the video is 100 seconds and you have seek from 20 to 50 then in the seek video table which we had passed out from the log entries we have two uh, two columns known as new time and old time so if we take the difference of that and uh, calculate the total sum now uh, machine learning he'll tell the activity level from uh, the features we have just derived these are the, with this with the help of this we are drawing the uh, uh, values from which we can derive now the seek time now i'll explain you this one so if i divide duration of the video divide duration plus seek sir now if you say if you not now. seek zero it is the entry will be zero so d by d will give you one now i am trying to keep this value value from one to ten so when if i get when a user has not at all seek the video his uh, entry per seek will be either zero or just one two or three seconds a minimum so i get a higher fraction towards 0 0.9 and 1 when I multiply it with 10, I will get a value say 9 to 10 something. Then this 10 value will show that he is a regular Okay, next go. Let me see and your Veka, Veka, Peka. Okay. Yeah. Next, so next, next, next. So this is the input for dot ARFA file for each user for feature 1, 2, 3. This is the input value which we have calculated from all the three features. Depending on the dependency of all those, we already are training. First we have to train the machine. So we have given on that whether he is dreaming or not 0 1. This will be taken as the input into VECA. So this is uh, with logistic regression from VECA itself. For that uh, .rf file, we have got this correctly classified instances as 10 with 71.4% and incorrectly as 28%. So this is what we did just yesterday. So we couldn't get time to even more go further. Right. No, no, no. And we didn't have any idea about The purpose what? of the internship is for you to learn. Okay. Okay. And you have done a very useful work where you have classified the events. But good work, I think end to end is what is most important. Okay. Whether whether you have missed the way or not, you know to start from somewhere and end somewhere. That is quite good.